Welcome to the MOOC course titled Corporate Social Responsibility. My name is Aradhana Malik and I teach at the Indian Institute of Technology in Kharagpur, West Bengal, India and I'm, I will be helping you with this course. So uh, let us uh, get through it. This lecture will deal with the introduction to corporate social responsibility. We will cover the basic aspects uh, regarding what corporate social responsibility is and uh, you know some some concepts surrounding it so it's a very brief lecture and i hope you enjoy it okay what is csr csr is composed of three words corporate social and responsibility corporate by definition means that we are talking about profit making organizations we are talking about large organizations that make profits. We are also talking about their connection when we talk about social, we are acknowledging that they exist as part of the society that they function in. So they are not removed, they are not isolated silos, they are within a society, they are within a social milieu. And then the third word, which is very, very important here, is responsibility, which means that they understand that they are part of a social, economic, environmental, natural milieu that they are functioning in. They realize that it is this environment, social, political, economic environment, the uh, natural environment that is supporting them, that is helping them stay stable and grow. And they are understanding that because this environment is supporting them so much, they need to give back to it from the profits they earn as a result of the resources they take from this environment in terms of people, the money and the natural resources. So then they try and give back to it. So these are the three, you know, three basic elements of corporate social responsibility. Corporate profit making, social connection with the environment, the around the with the environment that the organization functions in, and responsibility. So because we are resting on this environment, we also give back to it. We don't only keep taking from it, we sustain the environment by giving back to it so that it can take what we give back and it can support the other organizations, the other efforts that are going on. There's a cycle. Okay. Now the formal definition. It is a view of the corporation and its role in society that assumes a responsibility among firms to pursue goals in addition to profit maximization and a responsibility among a firm's stakeholders to hold the firm accountable for its actions. So it's not only something that the organization realizes, it is also now legally mandatory. It is a question of accountability. The environment says, I have given you so much, what do I get in return? Why should I support you? So it's a question of the environment. Even if you're not giving back to me, are you at least not damaging what I have? If you're hurting me by taking something from me, then I don't want to support you anymore. So that is, and we will come to that in a minute. Okay, so this is corporate social responsibility. Corporate philanthropy, that is another concept here. Philanthropy, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, is the practice of helping people in need. Now applied to the corporate organizations, corporate philanthropy is the desire of profit-making organizations to help people in need or to promote the welfare of people in need. So we identify where we can make a difference. We identify, okay, we have taken some resource. Okay, the, the resource was in abundance, we could afford it. We, you know, just going by very, very basics, we, we build our factory near a river, we have taken the water from the river, yes, we are channeling the water here, fine, there's enough water, the farmers are okay, so we are taking whatever the government permits us to take. But back to my environment, am I doing something to help the people around me? One, of course, the organized, the factory could make sure that it doesn't pollute the rest of the water by 
pumping back the effluent, the waste material into the same river that it draws the good water from. That is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, of course, that is something that is now required by law. You know, you don't pollute the environment. The other thing is because it is in a physical location, if you're making so much money, you have occupied a piece of land. There may be noise, there may be dust, there may be ash, there may be all kinds of waste material. Are you hurting the people around you? You contain the waste and then you also do something so that for the people around you, so that the people do not resist your existence in that location. Okay, so in the middle of a village, if there's a big factory, and this has happened in my home state of Himachal Pradesh, you know, some factories have come up in the mountains, and of course that's okay. I mean, they're all following the rules, I'm sure. But it, if nothing else, it spoils the landscape. It takes over some bit of land that could have been farmed on by somebody somewhere. So are you giving back to the environment or not? Are you helping the people that you are around or not? You know, we, we all know about the case of the, the Singur plant. So um, the, the Tata Nano plant that was set up in West Bengal and then it had to be uh, moved from here. So, you know, we all know what happened. There were lots of environmental issues associated with it. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we can talk about those things later, but we are talking about the desire of profit-making organizations to help people in need around their organizations. So, one is you do just what is required by law. The other is you proactively do something very, very positive for the environment even though it is not required by law. So philanthropy is a step above what is required, expected and desired. I will just show you the pyramid of corporate social responsibility and this will become more clear then. Okay. Now strategic corporate philanthropy, the acid test of good corporate philanthropy is whether the desired social change is so beneficial to the company that the organization would pursue the change even if no one ever knew about it. We do it for public image. We do it to channel our profits so people know that we are doing good. But will we keep doing this even if no one knows about it? That is the acid test. Would the organization continue to do good for people even if they were not noticed, even if they were not known for it? Okay, So that is the and then only the people who are benefiting from it would realize it, but not openly. Hmm? A balance between the ends of economic viability and the means of being socially responsible is strategic uh, corporate philanthropy, which means we are not asking organizations to stop making profit. Please make as much money as you want. It's good that you're making money. Please make as much money as you want. But out of the money that you make, it will help if a tiny fraction of the money that you make can be given back to the society in terms of benefits the society can use. Now, the Indian law requires, and I have the statistics here, I don't want the cameraman to focus on it. I have the statistics here, or um, I mean the law. The Companies Act of India 2013 requires organizations with an annual turnover of rupees 1000 crores or more, or a net worth of rupees 500 crores or more or a net annual profit of rupees 5 crore or more to spend at least 2% of their earnings on giving back to the society through their corporate social responsibility activities. So that is required by law. Hmm. But would we keep doing it even if it were not required by law? Would we keep doing it even if we did not advertise? Hmm. So we, we make a, we, we strike a balance. You're not saying that, you know, you put your profits aside and you still keep giving back to society. That's what typically philanthropists do. They look after the welfare of the people. Okay. All right. The CSR pyramid. Archie Carroll designed this pyramid, published it in a paper in 1991. And then a paper written by Schwartz and Carroll in 2013 quoted this pyramid. So I've taken this from there. 
they say that for an organization to function, hmm, the very basic thing that they need to do is be economically viable. Organizations need to be economically viable, so it is required here. Hmm? It is required to be profitable. Okay. Hmm. Then it is required to obey the law. It is then once you have, once you are profitable, once you obeyed the law, like I told you, it is a legal requirement in India to give 2 percent of your profits back to the society and you have to prove it. Excuse me, you have to have documentation, you have to have something substantial, something tangible. It is expected that you will be ethical, you will not harm the people around you. So that is being ethical, you do not take something from others that does not belong to you, you do not harm the environment around you, that is being ethical. Now being a good citizen is desired, which means not only do you not harm the environment around you, not only do you preserve the status quo, you give back to the society you ensure that the welfare of the people is your top priority. So that is desired. It is expected that you do not harm the environment and if you want to go a step further, you want to be the ideal model citizen, then you give back, you, you take one step forward, you, you do something additional and you give back to the society. Okay, the hierarchy. So with this pyramid, we first fulfill our economic responsibilities. I have to make profit. I have to also follow the law. Then I have to make sure that I do not do anything wrong. When we are talking about ethics, we are ensuring that we do not do anything wrong. Hmm. And then discretionary responsibilities. After I have satisfied, after I have completed these responsibilities, can I do something more? Can I, can I go above and beyond the call of duty and do something more for the society that the society does not even expect of me? So those are the discretionary responsibilities and this is the way they are filled in. Okay. The economic responsibility as the name suggests is to produce an acceptable return on its owner's investments. Legal responsibility is to follow the law. Ethical responsibility is to do no harm to the stakeholders and within its operating environment. Discretionary responsibility, like I told you, is proactive behavior. People are not expecting it from you, but you go ahead and still do it. Okay. The culture and context, we act within a society. We act according to what we can afford. Profit making organizations in poor countries or in countries where the economic environment is unstable may not want to spend so much on corporate social responsibility activities. They want to probably keep their resources, they want to hold on to their resources to uh, dig into them in times of uh, uncertainties or risks or, or unexpected uh, events or unexpected risks that they may be faced with. So that is, that is what will happen. In richer societies, they will say, okay, we already have enough. We know we are not going to be unstable. We know we have enough to carry us through. So they may have a, or they may be able to risk a larger percentage of their profits on giving back to society. So this will vary from country to country, you know, depending on their economic condition. Then individualistic and collectivistic cultures, we will come to this. Hmm? Individualistic cultures are those cultures that are focused on the individual. Can you? Yeah, thank you. The needs of individualistic cultures are very different from the needs of the collectivistic cultures. The priorities are different. Individualistic cultures say that if the individual is uh, doing what is required, the society will take care of itself. Collectivistic cultures say our profits are common, our losses are common, we are part of each other, we function as a team, we function as a network. The individual can keep doing 
whatever he or she wants to do, but you are always connected to this collective, this collaborative team, group of people, community. Okay. So the priorities are different. The agendas for corporate social responsibility will be very, very different according to the culture that we function in. So that will in turn determine what kinds of activities we indulge in. Then, moral argument for CSR is the existence of an organization and the expectations of the community and the wider society it functions in need to be balanced. One is, yes, I have a factory, I have lots of money, I'll say, okay, I will go and donate maybe 200 computers to all the children. I will give a computer to every child in the village. Very nice thought. Does the village have electricity? Are these children literate? What will they do with the computer? Have you trained them how to use it? Does the, compute, does the village have an internet connection? What does the community need? Maybe the community does not have enough water. Instead of spending all that money on computers, why don't you dig maybe 12 or 15 wells? Hmm. So that kind of thing. Maybe people don't have enough woolen clothes or maybe they, uh, you know, they, they live in thatched huts. Maybe you can build, you can spend the same amount of money building community spaces. Maybe it's in an area where there are constant hurricanes. Maybe you can build hurricane shelters instead of donating computers to the children. That will be of more use to the community. So, you know, the moral argument here is that we must balance the expectations of the community with what we are ready to give to them. So, we must find out what they need and assess our resources and bring these two as close to each other as possible. Okay. The iron law of social responsibility. In a democratic society, power is taken away from those who abuse it, applied to CSR activities. If we do not give back to the society, in a democratic society, the society will pull the organization down. We will not be able to survive in a community if we keep harming it, if we keep damaging it, if we only keep taking from it, we will not be able to survive the community, the society will eventually say, I've had enough. Nature will say, I've had enough and completely bring us down. The power to survive in that environment will be over. You know, we've had examples of factories being built near rivers and by taking a lot of water from those rivers, those rivers have dried up. Central India, we've had some cases there. You keep taking the water, you keep taking it, you keep pumping effluents into it. Eventually, nature says, I've had enough. I will not give you water. You built a factory on my river bank, on my bank, great, fine. Now there's no river there. There's no water there. So the factory had to be shifted to another location. So things balance out. Okay. CSR and profits. While CSR does not increase profits, this is proven in and through research, higher profits lead to greater CSR. You have more money to spend. CSR, again, CSR may lead to increased profits because your public image increases. It becomes better. Okay. Why is CSR important? Growing afflu affluence, people have more money. Ecological sustainability, we have to protect the nature that we are in. Globalization. People are moving, people are able to know what is going on in other parts of the world. The free flow of information, and I'll just show you what free flow of information does. We are able to, to take information from any part of the world and take it to any other part of the world. This is free flow of information. These people did not know they were being watched when they were indulging in these behaviors. A man spitting out of a car window, somebody throwing trash outside a moving car, people spitting, they did not know. So we don't know what information is going to be captured and circulated and how and when. We need to be careful. And of course, the public image of the organization, we, it, it, also, it, it always helps build the public image of an organization if we are good with our 
CSR activities, if we are appropriate with our CSR activities, if we give back to the society that we take so much from. So that is why CSR is important. Now this is where we will stop for today's lecture. This was just meant to be a very brief introduction. I just want to stimulate you all to start thinking about what you can do to look after the environment that you live in. And we will carry on the discussion in the next lecture. Thank you very much for listening.